Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? Can I uh, get a get away from everybody? Hi, everybody's here, happy, excited. Guys, I'm super excited to be here with you today for the next 15 minutes talking about a topic that's very passionate to me and a topic that happens to be probably the most consequential piece of work that I did in 2019 and probably in the past five years at Tableau, uh, really focusing in on HR and workforce analytics, a topic that um, I, I think there is no shortage of, of need of focus on just because of the changing dynamics of our country in, in, a, for a, in a lot of reasons. So for me, uh, let's just jump right in with both feet. I'm going to uh, gonna get us going here. You probably didn't expect to see my presentation start with this guy on the slide, did you? Anybody recognize this guy? Hide the Pain Herald, he's a famous meme for any time uh, you, know, you, uh, you look here. But, um, what I, what I wanted to start with and what I really want to talk about is the, uh, is the silver tsunami. Lots of organizations, public sector otherwise, are, whoa, there we go, uh, are, are really facing the silver tsunami. And that's the sort of the impending wave of retirements of, of the baby boom generation. I happen to work in state and local government, so I see that a lot uh, across states, across the United States that I travel to. And really for me, um, this age, and it's, it's been something that's been going on for a long time, but it's sort of been that thing that's it's happening, it's happening, it's happening, but it's not happened yet, so nobody's really thinking about it. And then until you really take a look at your data and figure out what's going on, y you just don't know. So I guess the question I ask is, should you wait to plan for this event until after it happens, right? Should you be proactive? Should you use your data? And would it make sense to really be aware of the landscape of your organization from an HR perspective and really thinking and thinking about the topics of diversity and inclusion, thinking about the topics of, uh, of where people are in their, in their careers and their roles. So for me, uh, customers are beginning to embrace this in, in my space especially. So I, that's why I wanted to share this good news with you uh, that I was able to, to work on in the, this year. But the thing of it is, you know, this is a bit, a bit silly, but the, the, it, it's a tough wave to ride. If you think about what's going to happen and what, what I am getting ready to show you, again, it was the most consequential piece of work that I did uh, in all of this year. So who am I? That's me, Anthony Young. I run our enterprise architect team at Tableau for the, pub, for the public sector, really focused in on state and local government. My personal KPIs, just so you know, a little bit about me. I'm 42.667 years old, trending down by the way. Uh, born in Independence, Virginia, 550 people. Live in Austin, Texas, almost a million people. I've been at Tableau for five years. Been doing this in the space in the data and analytics world for the past 20 years. Um, I have one wife, two kids, I drive a Jeep Wrangler. And if I had to choose a last meal today, it would be meatloaf, mashed potatoes, pinto beans, and cornbread. That's a staple growth food for people that grew up in Independence, Virginia. So thank you for that. But you're probably wondering, why am I here talking to you about this? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's an interesting topic, but why am I here? And I can stand up and boldly say that, that my philosophy, my approach helps people be successful. And, and I'm going to go through that approach that I took to get to my own personal aha with this data set uh, as, uh, you know, kind of as we work our way through here. So, here we go. I always tell people, you, you, everything sort of starts with, with a question, right? I wonder why our business is not performing well right now. I wonder why attrition is 35% right now. I wonder why th this certain part on this certain bus keeps breaking down all the time. I wonder, wonder, wonder. And that really starts the process of, of being analytical and being data driven and being data informed. And, you, and I tell people, Come at it from every angle that you can. Come at it from the who, what, when, where, why, if you can, uh, how also if you can, but really try to tease out every possible question in that data that you can get a hold of. And then once you get that first set of questions answered, think about another question. Think about another question that could really move the needle and change, uh, change your whole mind, change your whole approach, change the way that you're tackling this. And then collaborate. Don't be the, the, the greedy analyst that holds on to that information that uh, really prevents it from getting out. Help, I want you to, to think about this and really be, uh, be that collaborative player uh, within your organization. And then finally, do something smart with what you just found. Make a decision, change a policy, change a behavior, uh, implement some sort of, of program or process 
that'll help take the results that you found on that dashboard so that it'll be more than a, a so what and who cares, right? That's the last thing I want to see happen is anybody is, is analyzing their data. I call it the ask, answer, think, ask again, collaborate, then execute process. I should have made an acronym for that, but just remember those few words as you're tackling data. But the other thing I tell people, most people when they get started with data, they, they generally try to go from point A to point B. I have a data set, I have a question, and I wanna, I wanna get the answer to that question, and then I don't know what happens next. But really, at the end of the day, it kind of more follows this pattern if you're doing it right. If you're really sort of following the, the, the crooked road, if you, if you think about how you might say it in the South where I'm from, uh, you follow the crooked road, that helps you get to the non-obvious answers to the questions that you have, and that's really where you get the aha moments. And we're in the, speaking of the aha theater, that's what my entire talk is all about, is finding your own aha. And that's where, along that curved path, is really where those answers to those ancillary questions, those questions that you did not think about, really come into play. And for me, uh, aha moments don't come from the easy questions. If you're just counting noses or if you're uh, just sort of putting things in a different bucket and describing them, um, you don't get the aha. So for me, every good data challenge begins with something that looks like this. Anybody ever know, does anybody recognize that? Has anybody ever used that to do data analysis? You know what our most popular data source at Tableau with our customer base is? That one, Excel, right? Everybody uses Excel in this great land of ours and uh, people use it for data entry, data collection, data analytics, pivot tables, all kinds of cool stuff that they copy and paste into PowerPoint and put on a share drive that goes nowhere. You just have, the, you copy that folder over for next month. So for me, this organization I was working with on this exercise to get to, get to my aha, they had one very simple question. Are we diverse? Right? And I had a simple question after that. Can we figure out if you are diverse by looking at employee records from PeopleSoft? Just that. And if you think about it, you think about diversity, there's the obvious ones, right? Gender, race, ethnicity. But then there's uh, you know, location, there's diversity of experience, diversity of background, where you went to school. There's so many more things that are not obvious that come into the picture with diversity and inclusion. So this whole thing, this whole effort, began as a diversity and inclusion study. My one mission, my singular sole mission was to answer this question, are we diverse? So I took this and, and did, some, did some Tableau magic and came up with this. I'm a, I'm a super picky visual designer. I like things to look a certain way. And, and I, I put this together now. If you think about it, I'm gonna navigate you through it sort of mentally for a second, but look at what's going on here. We're kind of given the, the now perspective. We're giving how things have happened over the past couple years. Uh, the, you know, the type of employees, the six major categories, ethnicity, gender, uh, age group, and on and on. And you start answering questions, right? From a gender perspective, if you look at the kind of the male to female ratio, 77% male, 23% female, probably not as gender diverse. It doesn't really conform to uh, the, the demographic benchmark in Texas or even the nation for that matter. What about ethnicity? Kind of, right? We, we, we match the state, the state demographic quite, you know, pretty, pretty reasonably. From a positional standpoint, absolutely not, right? The, the traditional gender roles that were in play as I was working on this, just unbelievable how uh, almost uh, just, just uncomfortable it was when you were looking at it, right? 98% uh, of the skilled workers were, were all men, and 97% of administrative support were all women, right? Traditional gender roles were at work in those situations, and from an age point, no way. And I'm going to draw your attention right here to this little box, or this little area that says uh, late career, mid career, early career. And just mentally do the math there, as you can see, kind of, there's a, a few more uh, late career bubbles. There's people going all the way up to 75, 79 years old at this organization. And for me, this click, one single click on this di entire dashboard, on this diversity and inclusion study changed the whole game and really made me focus on, on the next step and gave me my personal aha moment with this. So you notice when I click on that right there, that lights up using a Tableau set action, lights this 
pie chart up and really breaks into something that, that stood out to me. So the other group versus the group of interest. The group of interest is late career individuals at this organization. If you knew that today that over, over 5,000, roughly 50% uh, of your organization could, uh, could retire very, very soon, within the next three to five years, would that be, uh, would that be troubling? Would that be disturbing? Oh, oh, what, 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 kind of what are we going to do, right? And you take that in context with this second viz. I asked the next question after that next question I asked, well, how long have people been on board? So if half the agency is getting ready to retire and uh, a quarter of the agency has only been there for less than five years, you've got a big collision that's getting ready to happen with, uh, with the um, sort of the, the aging out, if you will, but the green sort of green hand experience on the other side. So you're going to be left with a big hole with people retiring and not a lot of uh, experience to kind of come back to bring that back in. So for me, uh, the real insight came after that aha was when I built this visualization. And there's, there's a lot more to this, but I wanted to show you uh, as I stretch from sort of left to right here, uh, that one person, the lone person that's been eligible to retire for the last 23 years, that's come in every day and said, hey man, I'm here, I'm ready to work. To these people on the right hand side that have been, uh, you know, they just started their career, they have 31 years until they retire. No one's ever looked at the data like this at this organization to be able to say, this is how our distribution of individuals, and if you think about it from any, any line of business, right, I mean, you know, there may be tweaks in the, in the private sector versus what we would look at in the public sector, but knowing and understanding where every single employee in this 13,000 person organization stands from when they're going to potentially retire, that's a big, big deal. And if you look at this right now, I filtered on sort of left to right, or excuse me, right to left from zero years back, that tells me who's eligible to retire today. Right, and there's 11, 1,153 people, 10% of the organization ready to walk out the door this Friday. One, they're one bad day away from leaving, from retiring and moving on to their next, uh, to their next gig. And I say, the tsunami arrives. That's absolutely, you know, you can't ignore it. If you know exactly where, where, how it's gonna come and how it's gonna happen and when it's gonna happen, you can be aware and be prepared. So I guess I ask a question, what would you do if 10% of your workforce walked out the door this Friday? Tomorrow they said, sent you, you sent you an email and said, hey man, I'm not coming to work tomorrow on Monday. Good luck. It's been real. I'm moving on. What would, uh, I mean, if you could plan for it right now, why wouldn't you, right? If you, if you have the data, and everybody has an HR system in every place I've ever been to, uh, if you just have an, enough to do a basic kind of plan, you can get that idea. And you can cross train the people that are coming up that are, that are juniors in the organization, hungry to learn, hungry to, to be part of, part of the organization. And then you look five years out, right? Sort of now, the five years and back, that's 3,000 people ready to walk out the door in the next five years. That's a big hole to dig out of. And you, you kind of couple that with how the hiring's been over the last couple years. So what would you do? How would, you, would, you, would you start planning proactively? Would you take that advice I gave earlier, make, it, make a, a, an approach, a, a strategy, something to really focus in on what's, uh, how I can solve this problem, how I can get, get around this change? Super powerful. So my advice to you on the journey to AHA, I have one minute and eight seconds left, so I'm tracking pretty well. My advice to you on the journey to AHA, uh, just don't rely on easy questions. Right? For me, if you, if you just sort of, I call it counting noses, right? If you're just sort of looking around and, and, uh, and using, using different buckets of data to qualify the number of people that work in a, in, in a certain place or do a certain kind of work. Uh, oh, okay, cool. But really, you got to get to the so what and who cares and really figure out how and why, uh, you know, change is, is, is happening or going to happen. Uh, design analytics with a set of questions in mind that you have to answer, right? You're going to have a baseline set that you're going to start with. There may be five to seven questions on that data set. And I know if there's an element of time, if there's an element of, of geography, if there's an element of, you know, categorical variables, if you will, um, you've got four or five questions sort of baked in right from scratch, right? You can see how things are trending over time. You can see where things are happening. You can see what kind of things are happening. So you've got some that are sort of naturally baked in, but uh, dig deeper and uh, just rapidly innovate. Ask the next question, ask the follow-on question. I call them second and third order effect questions that really help you uh, go to the next level. 
And I make these things an ongoing sort of a sustainable effort, not something, and my time's up, so I'm going to finish right now. Um, not just one-time efforts, right? Make them sustainable. Make them go uh, again and again. So use those to, to make things happen, right? It's analytics. It's not reporting. You're not just getting lists of things that you're going to print into a PDF and hand to somebody so they can take meeting notes on it and then put it in the recycle bin at the end. This is analytics. This is things, this is power in your data so you can do some really smart stuff. And an approach that I, that I advocate for is macro to micro. Start big, then work your way to the details. Don't go the other way around, sort of the, the old pivot table path that people tend to take. And if you have to count, count what matters and make what, make what matters count, right? That's a very important thing for me. So my, my, my closing word, good luck on your journey. Just be sure you're the one driving the bus to take you there. And uh, I hope that you'll all have your own aha as you're working with data, working with our product Tableau here very soon. So I'm getting ready to have a brain date just down the hall in those bubble looking things. Uh, I think there's a few people signed up, but if you wanna talk more about this topic, um, that's at one o'clock and then there's my email. If you have a question or things, some, something that I said interested you, uh, by all means, feel free to reach out, put in the subject, I saw your, your diversity and inclusion study talk and I'll be very, very happy to, uh, to either help you or get you in the right hands of somebody that can help you. So. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate uh, your time. I hope you liked something that you saw here. I hope I said something that will make you think a little bit harder this afternoon. So uh, go forth, have a great rest of the day, and uh, have fun at Data Night Out tonight. Thank you.